I've always wanted to make my own Game Boy cartridge, and now I was able to make this. This is a 32 kilobyte development cartridge that can be used on the original Game Boy DMG. I designed the PCB on my own, and this thing uses an EEPROM or an erasable programmable read only memory. So, let's check it out. This cartridge uses this kind of EEPROM. This is known as a UV EEPROM. As you can see, there's a little window there where you can shine UV light to erase it. And here's the part number. It is 27C256B. 256 stands for 256 kilobits, which is equivalent to 32 kilobytes. So this EEPROM sockets into the 28-pin socket that you see on the cartridge. And this can be programmed relatively easily. I'll show it to you right now. By the way, if you want the design of this PCB, I will link a file on the description so that you can download the printable PDF. Please note that the PDF is a mirrored image that is intended to be used as a, a transfer, a toner transfer to a blank PCB. So this is my programmer. This is a Willem programmer. As you can see, the version is PCB 5.0e. The software can be downloaded from their website. I already installed it on my PC, so let's run it as uh, administrator. So it's currently set up to program the device that we have, the EEPROM 27C256. We need to set the dip switches on the programmer itself and the jumper as well. So pins 1, 2, 5, 6, 8, and 9 should be set to on. The rest should be off. And the VPP jumper should be set to the lower two pins. So we'll check it on the programmer right now. So the dip switches. Uh, switches 1, 2, 5, 6, 8, and 9 are on, and the jumper is set to the lower two pins. Also, the program indicates how the IC or the chip is to be placed on the ZIF socket, taking note of the first pin. So the first pin is usually the upper left pin when the chip is oriented this way. So it's now time to put the chip inside the zip socket. We have to lock it in place. Next thing is to do a blank test. It's important to do a blank test to check whether the chip is em uh, empty. So it says device is empty. If not, then you, we can use a UV eraser to erase the contents of the chip. 
So we will now load a file to be written onto the chip. So once we've found the file, in this case, it is a free Game Boy game called DMG Deals Damage. And we will click on the icon that has a lightning bolt, also known as the program chip button. So as you can see, the program is now being written on the chip. Programming the chip doesn't take much time. The file is quite small and can be written to the chip quite easily. The program will also verify the chip that it's been written correctly. You will see the status below. Device programmed OK. Now we can remove the chip. And finally put it on to our development cartridge. I've designed the board so that the orientation of the chip is horizontal and the notch on the top side is on the left. We may need to bend the legs inward a little bit so a flat surface will do well to do this to do the bending of the legs but we don't have to bend it too much We will now insert the EEPROM to the IC socket on the dev cart, making sure the orientation is correct. And now we can test it on to our Game Boy. This is my modified Game Boy Advance SP with an IPS screen. There are times when we need to wiggle the cartridge about since the pins don't perfectly align with the pads on the board and sometimes the pads on the cartridge are dirty causing the game to hang so we'll reinsert the cartridge again and hopefully this time it works. This game is free, you can search it online and you can play it on an emulator or you can put it on a cartridge like what I have here. The game is just 32 kilobytes so it fits perfectly well in this development cartridge and in, on the EEPROM. Now in this game your goal is to smash all other devices. You play as the Game Boy DMG or the original Game Boy. It's quite a fun game. So there you have it, the game works fine. I can potentially remove the EEPROM and replace it with another EEPROM with another game on it. I made this not for piracy but for game development. I plan to make my own games using GB Studio in the future. The EEPROMs are available online. They're relatively cheap. But bear in mind, most of these UV EEPROMs sold online are used. So you may need a UV eraser to erase the contents of these EEPROMs before you do any programming. The case is a bootleg case. I cut off the I cut part of the front casing to expose the IC socket and here is my Willem programmer. This uses a parallel port and is powered via USB. So if you intend to use one of these, please note that you need to have a PC that has a working parallel port. 
Newer, more modern PCs don't feature the parallel port anymore. So bear that in mind before buying a programmer like the one I am using. There you have it. My 32 kilobyte development cartridge for the Game Boy. If you're interested in making your own, you may download the PCB template in the description box below. If you enjoyed the video, click like, subscribe if you haven't yet, share and leave a comment, and once again, enjoy.